Okay, well, the first time that I was taken to the theater was when I was in grade seven and we went to see Phantom of the Opera here in Toronto. So it was a big trip uh, on the bus. And uh, I loved it. It was kind of a spectacle and we had studied about it. So I was waiting for the chandelier to come crashing down. And uh, I think it did probably spark a love of theater. Um, but later that year, we had a student teacher who taught us improv, and that's when I really started to get into theater, and uh, from there, there was no stopping me. When I was a young kid, I always, always saw the commercials for cats, and I really wanted to see that as a child, but my mom thought I was too young then, but uh, when I was in grade 7, I had my chance for my first musical theater experience, which was to go see the Phantom of the Opera as a school trip, and that was my first experience going to see live theater, and I absolutely loved it. I was bitten by the book. <laughs> So the first play that I ever saw, I guess you could probably consider, more of a musical, was Sesame Street Live when I was, I think I was five, and I remember it was down at, I guess, what was the O'Keeffe Center at the time, and they had all of the Sesame Street characters come down in limousines and wave, and I got really angry at my dad because he was waving at Cookie Monster, and I didn't want him to wave at Cookie Monster, um, but even at that age, I loved singing and loved dancing and loved acting, so I don't know if Cookie Monster or Big Bird inspired me to do what I do, but I think it definitely played a little bit of a part. So I have two very early memories of going to the theater. Uh, one is going to see a production of Charlie's Aunt, a high school production that my dad had actually directed. So I just remember being in this big theater and running up and down the stairs and thinking it was really cool that it was my dad's show, so I felt a little self-important. Um, other show, and I think it happened around the same time, so I don't know which one's first, uh, was going to see the Mikado at the Windsor Light Opera, and my grandmother took me to that. And um, I think it was like eight or something. Yeah, I was eight. So those two things have still remained with me as uh, my two earliest childhood memories. Did that spur in a, in a love or a passion or a drive to go into the theater? Well, it, it certainly didn't stop it. Um, but I just didn't always know theater and going to the theater is a way of life. The first professional stage production I ever saw, this is going to sound really bad, I grew up in Welland, Ontario, which is a filthy little town in the Niagara region that is bankrupt of culture. And I, so with my grade 9 English class, yes, it was grade 9, I saw Les Mis. And I think this, again, reiterates my belter envy. I wanted to be Eponine. I was like, that's it. I'm going to do I'm going to do theater. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to do stage. I'm pretty sure my parents rue the day they signed that permission form. <laughs> the first play that I remember seeing was A Midsummer Night's Dream at uh, Stratford, at the Stratford Festival. And uh, this was back when I was in, oh, my first year of high school so it was a time where I kind of had always loved acting but I, I wasn't sure if it was something that I could plausibly devote my life to and um, so upon seeing that production it was just so beautiful the costumes were gorgeous the cast was really strong and I just basically you know the lights went up at the end and I was in love <laughs> and so um, that's what sparked my love of Shakespeare as well as um, you know my understanding and devotion towards bringing that um, Shakespeare on stage to children I think that's really important because the text itself isn't enough you know they need to see it in performance in order to really understand what all the fuss is about so that was my first experience